It's Sir Jim Gaffigan. You are uh, an example, both of you, because you're, you're, you're both, uh, you write with Jeannie. Yeah. And so you're both comedians. Did you have that example, like, from your parents? Like, what role did, like, you say your mom play in your becoming comedian? I mean, I was the youngest of six kids, but, like, m the impact of my mother uh, on, you know, making my mom laugh was probably the most powerful I ever felt. So it was one of those things where I remember specific moments just getting her to laugh. And that's not to say that she was, like, depressed or anything, but it was just, like, a pretty important achievement. And so... But I remember even when I uh, was in my early 20s and I would call home and I, the, my first car I had bought, I didn't, I, I don't know anything about cars. So I essentially never replaced the oil and I just drove the car into the ground. <laughs> and so I called home and I was explaining this to my mom and my dad. And my mom was just laughing so hard. <laughs> And what I was getting to was asking for money, and she was laughing about that, too. So it was like the ability to make her laugh was something that, uh, you know, particularly when I was complaining, I thought, oh, wow, this is a strange, unique thing. And then when, you know, my mother passed away in my early 20s, it was, I mean, it was pretty devastating, but I think that's where stand-up kind of uh, stand-up's my mom. No, I think that stand-up <laughs> replaced something that, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that endorphin rush of getting that feedback, and it was, I don't know how to articulate it, but it's pretty amazing. You know, I remember I used to do impressions of my dad. My dad was a very uh, kind of intimidating figure. Like, if we met him, if you met him today, he's not around, but if you met him, you'd be like, he's perfectly fine. But to me, he was this intimidating figure. And you're the baby doing and an I'm impression the of the dad. So I was doing an impression which my mom loved and all my siblings loved. And so it's, it's so strange because when my first television appearance, which uh, was Caroline's Comedy Hour, the whole set was complaining about my father and doing an impression of my father. And now all my stand-up is just me complaining about my kids. So <laughs> it's, it's come full circle. I don't want to put you on the spot, yeah. but can I hear what your dad sounded like? <clears throat> well, Stephen. <laughs> Colbert. <laughs> Sounds French. <laughs> I don't know. You know why Jimmy Carter carries around a turkey? Spare parts. <laughs> so he was he go. was unintentionally funny. So it was uh, you know so there was that influence, but he was and humor's a big deal in it was a big deal in my family growing up, and it is a big deal even in the family, uh, the chaos that I've created with my wife. Would you want your kids to... to my son, comedy? my son Jack, has opened for me many times. Is he times. the eldest? He's, he's the second oldest. Okay. And, um, and he is... I mean, he's one of the funniest people I know, and he, he does things that are so um, funny but brutally... Like, during the lockdown, you know, as we all were locked down for this extended period of time, and you're... You look at your family and you're like, I'm going to kill everyone in this family. <laughs> there was, there was a, a moment where my son, who just knew, he just, kids just know the buttons to press. And so he invented this song where he was like, the mom rules the house, the dad is the mouse, we all live in fear. So wildly inappropriate, <laughs> right? And so just kind of summing up the dynamic of tension. Uh -huh. And so what he would do after that is he would never sing the song. He would just hum it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd be at dinner, and he'd be like, ba-bam, bam 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 <laughs> And it's just so brilliant. That's wonderful. But do you steal jokes from your kids? I mean, there's definitely been ideas. There's yeah. definitely... Uh, Observations like where they don't know they're they're coming up with. Yeah, I'll steal from them. Sure. Yeah. You know. <laughs> they're all Why gonna not? get it back in the end when you right? go, right? I mean, they're working. You know, they're not contributing. You know what I mean? <laughs> None of More these. More than Pat Sajak. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the great Pat. Oh my Sajak. God! You hear that? Oh, don't say bad things. I know about because Pat I'm Sajak. sure he's. I, I get nervous because I'm like I'm sure he's a great guy and I don't want to be just piling on someone. No. You know what I mean? Pat, come on out. What? <laughs> Let's that. That would be a, that would be a good talk. Show. That would be. That is so. So, 
Jim, it's always exciting to see you on stage, but now you're on your Barely Alive comedy tour, and I understand coming up you're headlining a few cities with uh, a fellow named Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, he is, you know... Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, I, I think that it's important to give back and to help Comedians that are sure. struggling, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, people yeah. don't know. I mean, I, Jerry Seinfeld, I, you probably don't know who he is. He is, <laughs> he's, he's a, he's got something. Yeah. Like, I feel like people, I feel like America would like him. You know yeah. what I mean? I hear good things. And so Jerry and I are doing some shows. He's also serving as my assistant. And <laughs> I'm just gonna show him some of the ropes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what, but, are you, what are you what are you expecting from uh, being out there with? You know, Seinfeld? I don't know how long or how often he's been on stage, but <laughs> I think by the end of these, we're just doing four markets, and you know, I might fire him. But uh, <laughs> no, but we've we're Jerry, always looking for good people. If you want to send him over, here. I think I think I think if people here in the audience wanted to see Jerry Seinfeld, let's bring Jerry out. <laughs> no, no. Jerry. <laughs> Let's bring Jerry and Pat Sajak out. <laughs> no. We keep imagining a much better talk show than I have tonight. But, you know, as... All I've got is gaff again. No, but this is where, you know, where we talk about, uh, you know, us going to dinner. It's always... It sounds like, you know, like, of let's do it. Of course we would do that, yeah. But with, but with Jerry and with stand-ups, it's like Jerry and I have been talking about touring together since before the pandemic. So it was one of those things where we were like... Because we love to just talk comedy mm -hmm. and and craft and stuff like that, so that's some of why we're doing these shows is so that we can hang out and just nerd out. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's really pleasant. It's, yeah. So it's amazing. Well, Jim, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Best to Jeannie. Tickets to his Barely Alive tour are on sale now, and you can watch Dark Pale on Prime. It's Jim Gaffigan, everybody. We'll be right back with the performance by Caroline Polachek.